What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be showing off Stefan Ivanhoff's top eight Baby Blue Cephalon deck from the Malmo Regional Championships. Stefan has been a pioneer with this Baby Blue Cephalon archetype, constantly reinventing it and placing well at major events. And this event, the Malmo Regional Championships, was no different. This list is stunning and a stark deviation from the other lists that we have seen for this deck. We see not only do we have uh, Baby Blacephalon and the Blacephalon GX in the deck, but we've also got some newcomers from Sword and Shield. Victini V with the Spreading Flames attack can bring three fire energy from the discard pile to any of your Pokemon. Also energy burst capable of taking some key one hit knockouts. Cramorant V and the Spit Shot attack is capable of KOing Dedene GXs on your opponent's side of the field, taking that final prize you might need for game, just a great snipe option for this deck. Oracorio GX and the Dance of Tribute ability allows for some very explosive draws after one of your Blacephalon gets KO'd. So this deck is very difficult to play against with such an explosive engine. It is very easily to Stellar Wish multiple times, draw a ton of cards with Oracorio GX, Day Day Change to find even more cards, and then finally announce a huge Fireball Circus for one hit KO. So I really like the flexibility of this list. Something else that's really interesting about it, only three copies of Blacephalon, but we do play an ordinary rod in the list. So we've got some flexibility with our attackers, uh, which is fantastic for this deck. Previously, Baby Blacephalon decks just played four copies of that Blacephalon, and then maybe some alternate attackers in the Blacephalon GX, or maybe a Heatran in this version of the deck. We have just got three copies of Blacephalon, who, are, who is our main attacker. But then if we want to get a fourth and a fifth version of or copy of this card, we can just ordinary rod them back into the deck and continue swinging. But usually you don't really need more than a couple of Blacephalon to finish the game because you're going to be trading extremely favorably with tag team Pokemon GX and Pokemon like Zacian V. Some other interesting inclusions we have in the deck, Absol and Fion, some of the best bench sitters the format has to offer. Fion's Whirlpool Suction can get around annoying Lily's Polka Dolls, as well as uh, Pokemon like Obstagoon with its Obstruct attack. And then Absol is great for just locking up your opponent's board and making it so that they have difficult retreating for free and just clunking up decks that run the Jirachi engine, which is quickly proving to be the most successful engine in the Pokemon trading card game at this point. Plenty of energy, search, and recovery. We've got four copies of Fiery Flint in the deck, allowing you to get four fire energies out of the deck and into your hand. Great for powering up that Fireball Circus attack. But we've also got four copies of Fire, fire Crystal as well as two energy retrievals. So plenty of opportunities to bring fire energy back from the discard pile. And noticeably absent, Victini V is not featured uh, not Victini V, Victini Prism Star. Victini V is right here. Victini Prism Star is not in the deck. So we don't have that Victini Prism Star form of energy recovery. Instead, we've just got four fire crystals and two energy retrieval. And then, of course, Victini V, who's spreading flames, can bring fire energy back from the discard pile into play if you need it. A couple other interesting cards. We've got Ultra Forest Carton Void. Now, as you may notice, there are no evolution Pokemon in this list. So we don't have a great way to get around Cramorant, or we don't have a great way to get around Obstagoon, Galarian Obstagoon and the Obstruct Attack, except for Ultra Forest Cart and Void, which makes it so that your Ultra Beast uh, attacks are not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So if your opponent does try to pare down your uh, their board position and just go with a lone Galarian Obstagoon, you can use Ultra Forest Cart and Void to hit through that and just win the game because the Obstagoon decks are going to try and get their board position to just be a single Galarian Obstagoon and you can just win with a well-timed Ultra Forest Cart and Void. We also have got Beast Bringer in the list. If you have exactly six prize cards remaining and your opponent's active Pokemon is a GX or EX, it is knocked out by damage from this attack you get to take a bonus prize. It's great against Arceus, Dalga, and Palkia decks because you can get that Beast Bringer onto a BB Blacephalon and then go in and take four prizes 
on an RCS Dialga Palkia, which shortens the length of the game. That's one of the best qualities that any deck can have in current standard is just shortening the length of the game. RCS Dialga Palkia famously goes in with the Alter Creation GX and makes it so that they only have to take three knockouts against your non-GX deck, or even two if they knock out, maybe a on and a Dedenne. So can theoretically win the game in four turns, putting you on a clock. If you knock out an RCS Dialga Palkia with a Beastbringer attached, you can win the game in just two attacks and could theoretically win the game in just two turns. If you got a turn one Fireball Circus into an Arceus Dagapalkia for four prizes and then a turn two knockout on a Zossian V, you could theoretically beat that deck in just two turns. Now that is obviously if things go extremely well, but it does give you some wiggle room against that very popular deck. We do have Stadium Nav in the deck as well to search out our Stadium cards, Ultra Space and Heat Factory, as well as a copy of Lucky Egg. And I do love the Adventure Bag in the list, just giving us a little bit more flexibility to go get our tool cards, a skateboard, Lucky Egg, Beast Bringer, um, and that's it. Yeah, a skateboard, Lucky Egg, and Beast Bringer. Yep, the Adventure Bag gets you those guys. So that is a very good card in the deck as well. It's a lot of fun to play, so I look forward to showing it off in some gameplay action. With Arceus, Dauga, Palkia, Zacian V decks all over the place, I do expect Blacephalon decks to be very popular, especially this weekend at the Toronto Regional Championships. I think that this is a great new way to play this deck. I think a lot of players like the idea of playing a non-GX deck. In some ways, it kind of feels like Night March, right? We've got these non-GX attackers, non-EX attackers, but our board is filled with Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna be trading favorably with most of the decks in format. Now, this is obviously a, uh, a situation where we're not gonna be trading favorably against a Malamar deck. So this is a little bit of a sketchy matchup for us. We don't have any great gust options to be able to play around spell tags. If this Giratina does get up and attacking quickly, then that could be problematic for us. But we're gonna see how we do. Do have Welder in the Stadium Nav to get things kicked off. I can just Heat Factory 2 and the Beast Bringer doesn't matter because I'm not going to be knocking out any sort of Pokemon EX or GX. So we actually do have a fantastic opening hand. We're just going to go with these guys, the Fiery Flint, get a ton of fire energy to our hand. And then we have the option to Heat Factory. So we're going to do that to see even more cards. And then we can Welder to the active and hopefully just take this knockout. Now, we are, I think, a little bit short right now, and I don't have any other way to reach. I don't have Switch, I don't have another Fiery Flint. I could retreat into Jirachi, that's not really gonna do much for us, so I think that we are just looking at a potential blazer here if I attach and then I've only got one fire energy in the discard pile so that is a little bit unfortunate for us but uh, I think the blazer is probably just fine here we can save our welder and fire energies for the following turn I'm not going to put down any other Woo! we got the fire energy too so that's busted um, hitting for 60 that means I'm only gonna have to discard two energy with my fireball circus next turn Viridian is also nice for me because I'm going to be able to actually search out the energy that I need in order to pull off Fireball Circus attacks. Now, I do think that Malamar is also a pretty valid option for the Toronto Regional Championships as well. I think that the Mimikyu, the copycat Mimikyu is just such an underrated card in this format right now, giving you the ability to one-hit KO Zacian Vs after they have used their Brave Blade attack. So I'm hoping that my opponent is not able to pull off the Shadow Impact this turn. I really need to stay favorable in the prize trade in order to have a chance in this game. Since I don't have any real Gust, I have the Fion, which can help me in situationally play around spell tags. But if they've got a Malamar here to Psychic Recharge, I'm going to be in a little bit of a tough spot. I don't think they have it, though. They don't even have a Psychic in the discard pile, so we're just probably going to knock out this Jirachi and go from there. Fortunately, I am drawing very well without 
needing Dedenne or Corio or anything like that. So we're definitely feeling good about that. Do want to draw more cards, uh, though I don't necessarily want to welder to the active. So let's go here. Get ourselves another fire energy. And then I could welder two to the bench. And I think that gives me the option. If I welder two to the bench, then I can fireball circus with the fire crystal because I have two fire in the discard pile. So I can pretty safely welder two fire energies to my bench, Blocephalon, and we should be okay. Though we are a little bit uh, tight here. I do take the knockouts, but we are on our final energy to do so. Fortunately, I do have the escape board there and then can just use that fireball circus. And I have seen all four of my welders, so we will gladly shuffle those to you back into the deck because I know I will be needing them. I'm also going to need this Ordinary Rod as well, since as we saw, I am only running three copies of Blacephalon. So I know that the Fire Energy probably is gonna be a good grab for us because I've got Welder in my hand and I'm gonna to wanna to see more cards without having to put that Oracorio into play. So we're hoping that that, uh, that is the case, that I can play the whole game without putting the bird down. If I have to put the bird down, I will. Uh, Blacephalon GX, also a great option for me to just end the game. I'm going to be looking to try and end the game with Blacephalon GX. I would also like to Fion around the spell tag because eventually my opponent can take a bonus prize on this Jirachi that I more or less have to have in play. If I'm not putting the Oracorio down, I'm going to have to at least have the Jirachi. But let's see if we can hit our Fion. They still don't have any Malamars in play yet. This is just three manual attachments to the Giratina. And let's see what we can do. Uh, I've got plenty of fire energy in the discard pile at this point, and we can welder to the Blacephalon, though I would rather not welder to this Blacephalon if I don't have to. So let's see if we can't Stellar Wish first and find something else. I've got the Ultra Forest Carton Boy as well as an Energy Retrieval. And I'm thinking that we may end up having, I only got six welders. So we may end up being in a situation where I have to just put this Oracorio down because I don't want to waste one of my welders here. Uh, I have used two welders. So we're in, at, on pace right now if I use Let's see, I've used two welders already. If I use my third welder here to go to four prizes, I am eventually going to get to a situation where I more or less have to, um, yes, where I more or less have to put that, uh, uh, or have to, uh, I'm gonna run out of welders, basically where I'm at. So I think I do have to put this Oracorio down and use that ability to see more cards to give myself an out to potentially find another uh, attacker. So let's try and do that and see what we get. So we're gonna dance a tribute and try to just find more cards. Uh, we do have some switches here in addition to these Jirachis, so that's fine, I can go here. And I could dig some more fire energy out of the deck, that's probably okay. So let's go here, Fiery Flint, and just thin the deck a lot more. We're gonna get those out of the deck. And I would love to find a Quick Ball or my other Blacephalon something. Quick Ball would be great. So let's see if we can find it. I've got Quick Ball. So I am going to be able to welder to a new Blacephalon this turn to draw more cards. And that is very good for us. So we certainly like that. And I do have to kind of tread carefully. Uh, I would also like to find my Fion. So we're going to go here. And I think that we can get rid of a Fire Energy. That's probably okay. We're going to get another Baby Blacephalon and just welder to it. So we've got that, and I do have to be careful that I don't run myself too low on energy because I do still have to take this knockout this turn. Did not find the Fion, unfortunately, so I am just going to be biting into this spell tag this turn, but that's fine actually because my opponent doesn't necessarily have a great board position built up, so that is playing to my advantage. We can go here. And I think we're just going to get another fire energy out of the deck as well. Don't think that there's too much to grab off this 
adventure bag, but we'll uh, go adventuring a little bit. And then we're gonna go here, and I only need two energy to take this KO. So let's go fire crystal, three back from the discard pile, and we have got the fireball circus knockout with two discarded because of the blazer that I hit on a previous turn. So I do imagine that we're gonna see some spell tag damage go down onto the Jirachi there, and you can see that my opponent, yes, wasting no time with that. They wanna take out my Jirachi with the escape board. Fortunately, we find a quick ball though. So I will be able to Fion around a potential spell tag this upcoming turn, though we do know it's gonna to go to 50 and uh, it is kind of tough. Cramorant also can be a valid option for me at some point in the game because of its ability to hit around spell tags as well. Now, if my opponent doesn't have any sort of supporter and they don't, so this is huge for us because they are just stuck. Now, this does give them a prize. If I hit into the NK, I can't Fion around it because they just have these spell tags going on, but they've got nothing else. So I think that I'm probably just okay. And Absol could actually just be very strong for me since the Fion is not doing as much. I do have to discard two energy. So Absol could be good. I also, the Ordinary Rod in, com in combination with the Fiery Flint is good too because I can put more energy back into the deck and then Fiery Flint for them to my hand. So we do also like that. Let's go and I guess I could switch and just see if I find anything. I kind of like that. Go there. We'll Stellar Wish. Got an Ultra Space. I actually kind of like the Viridian being in play. We're just going to grab the Fire Crystal. Gives me a lot more flexibility with my Fire Energy. And then I'm thinking that we are just going to get rid of probably the Quick Ball. That's fine. We're just going to go get Absol. Absol should be very tough for them to play around because they're not getting that free retreat. So we're gonna go there, and I know I'm giving up a prize, but it's fine, because they missed a turn of attacking, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go here and take the knockout Fireball Circus, discarding two. I can save this other energy in my hand. Malamar doesn't typically play a way to disrupt the hand, so I know that I'm probably just square, holding on to these resources. I don't need to necessarily waste any of them. I'm not gonna waste a Welder this turn, since, as we said previously, I've only got six of those. So that is going to be a valuable resource for us. And we do expect them to take that prize card since they are now losing the prize trade. They need to try and get some sort of juice going to the hand, be it a supporter or something, because they cannot afford to miss another attack. But I think the Absol is gonna put in a lot of work and the Absol is just one of those cards that's just such a good bench sitter and as we see, my opponent is not going to be able to retreat this Inke this turn, um, even into the Jirachi. If they wanted to, they can't do it. And now I'm feeling very confident. We're going to sprint ahead to that win. Missing that back-to-back uh, -back KOs with Malamar feels really tough. So that, uh, that was an unfavorable matchup. Malamar should, on paper, have the upper hand against this Blacephalon deck, but we saw just the consistency, speed of the deck uh, was able to trade favorably and put Malamar in a compromising situation in that game. We'll run it back for one more and see how we do. Maybe we get to see a game against Zacian ADP. Uh, I've had very good experiences with the Blacephalon deck against Picaron. That matchup seems great. Usually they go in in full blitz and you can just put down all of your Pokemon GX if you have to in order to pull off the response knockout to a Picaram. You go Oracorio, you could Heat Factory, you could Dedenne, whatever you got to do in order to score that one-hit knockout against the Picaram. And then it's just smooth sailing from there. And as a Picaram player, if you get your Picaram knocked out as soon as it full blitzes, that just feels Horrible. So we've got a great starting hand here, and it does look like I'm potentially playing against Zacian ADP. So that does give us some turns to set up. We've got the Stellar Wish. We've got an Ultra Space as well to get ourselves the Blacephalon and really kind of stabilize our board position. And it's looking like, no, it is Picaram. Never mind, not Zacian ADP. So we'll get to see if my uh, if my theories hang true, that this is a, or ring true, that this is a, a good matchup for us. And I think that it is. 
Double Jirachi is even better because we get Stellar Wish twice, and what's not to love about that? We can easily start this game off with a Fiery Flint to just go get four more Fire Energies out of the deck. Check the deck real quick. We've got Baby Blacephalons, we've got Oracorio, Cramorant, Victini V. All the goons are here. That looks good. Welders? There's something's got to be prized. We've got two welders prized. All right. So that is the... Uh, I was going to say it's, it feels too good to be true that there could be so little prize. So let's go get ourselves Blacephalon out of the deck. And then I actually think we want to thin even more. With two fire crystals in my hand, I'm feeling pretty good about just sucking all the fire energy out of my deck and trying to give ourselves the highest opportunity to find that um to find that welder as possible now with two jirachi and blacephalon we're at least giving ourselves the best chance possible to find the cards that we need so i'm just going to go here and stellar wish again i'm not exactly sure who i want to use this quick ball for wrong supporter but we will grab the switch since it's going to give me the most amount of outs to be able to find that welder this next turn. And we're just going to pass. Hope that my opponent doesn't reset stamp my hand since my hand is pretty good. Though I guess if I did get reset stamped, I would have the opportunity to potentially find a welder. So even if I do get reset stamped, it's probably okay. But if my opponent gets out of the gates quick. They take a knockout on the Jirachi, maybe with the Tapu Koko V or something like that. Um, then uh, then I can go quick ball for Oracorio and we can go from there. That's why I didn't use the quick ball yet. But it looks like we're getting Marnie. Then this is Pikaram Marnie. The rainbow rare Marnie's there. Big charms. Maybe the welders are on the bottom of my deck. <laughs> Apparently not. That's fine, though. And I don't expect my opponent to really be able to launch a turn one attack off of the Marnie. So that's totally fine. And in my experience, it's kind of how it goes. If you play the Marnie engine in Picaram, it's like, yeah, you disrupt your opponent, but you also do less. So you kind of have that trade-off. We can go get ourselves another Blacephalon out of the deck and see if we can't get a little luckier here. I've got another Fiery Flint. Love four Fiery Flint in this deck. It's beautiful. So... We can just do that. And then we've got Heat Factory as well. We can get rid of the Fire Energy and the Jirachi to go get four Fire Energies out of the deck. Two Welders still floating around in there. We'll see if we can find them off the Stellar Wish. I guess we'll Heat Factory first, just give ourselves a little bit more draw. So we get to look eight cards into the deck. I have Stadium Nav. I don't think that there's actually any oh yeah, other Stadium in my deck. So that is just going to be a good grab for us. Um, as far as uh, a discard card for quick ball or something like that. So let's, uh, we could quick ball and day day change or something like that. I just really don't think it's worth it here. We can just continue jockeying for position. So let's just continue searching. And the lucky eggs not really making the biggest difference in this match for us or in this current position either. See, I don't have. Any retrieval cards in my hand, so I think we might as well just go for the energy retrieval just to have it. And then I'm okay just putting a bunch of Blacephalons down into play. At least one more. And we're going to manually attach to this one and just pass to my opponent. So we're kind of just waiting for them to take that first knockout. And that's usually what we do with the Baby Blacephalon deck is that you're just kind of biding your time when your opponent takes that KO then we go off we get the Oracorio we get the most explosive draw that we can uh, we can get and my opponent off that Marnie does not have hardly anything so they have to go for the spike draw which gives us a lot more flexibility especially since we just uh, we just top decked into a fire crystal I've got a potential five energy to bring back from the discard pile this turn so I am going to thin a little bit more Get myself, I don't think anything too serious yet. We're just going to get ourselves the Oracorio just in case. Like, I know my opponent's not taking a knockout this turn, but the Fion, it's not completely necessary, though I could bring up the Picaram and knock it out, which would be totally epic. So I think maybe we will grab the Fion. That is a little bit greedy. Let's grab the Oracorio. If we draw into the Fion, then it's meant to be. So we're just thinning the deck. We're going to Heat Factory. See more cards. There's the Fion. 
Can we find a welder? That is the question. Not yet, the deck says, but we do have a switch. And actually it does not matter because I have the third fire energy in my hand. So at this point, I do not need it. I'm just gonna bring up that Picaram the old fashioned way and manually attach. So we don't even need the welder. That's fine, we have it, but I don't even need it. We have got the Beast Bringer as well, Fion, and Whirlpool Suction. Bring up the Picaram, and we're taking four prizes. No welder necessary. Energy Retrieval for three, or Fire Crystal for three, and Fire Crystal for three more, because I need to do, um, yeah, I need to do 300 damage to this thing because of the big charm. So we're just gonna do that. And we got Fireball Circus for infinite prize cards. So that's pretty rad. I could also welder to the Blacephalon and I've got energy retrieval to bring, ah, that's a little bit greedy, so there's no point. Let's just do it here. And we've got the knockout no matter what. I'm pretty comfortable just putting the Aura Choreo down just in case we get GX'd and I can put that Blacephalon down as well. We're just gonna Fireball Circus for our four prizes, which is insane against the Picaram. First knockout, Beast Bringer coming in clutch there. So we've got it and we are just looking smooth sailing from here on out. And it would be crazy if I don't find any welders. There we go, we got one of our prized welders. No welders played, three manual attachments to the Blacephalon and we're taking a huge knockout with that. The Fion coming in clutch there too, which was nice to see getting us the gust on that Picaram. And there's just situations where Fion just gets you that knockout that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Maybe your opponent only has a couple Pokemon in play. Maybe you're playing around a spell tag or something like that. And it certainly happens all the time. And my opponent just hasn't seen a lot of cards yet. They Marnie turn one. They drew very poorly off of the Marnie and have just been struggling to get going. They gotta find a Thunder Mountain Prism Star or maybe a Tapu Koko Prism Star and an Energy Switch in order to use their Thunderous Bolt attack this turn. And if they don't Thunderous Bolt, they are very much in danger of losing this game. They find the Thunder Mountain and I'm not worried about it. I've got Welder, Fiery Flints, Energy Retrieval in my hand, or Corio on the bench. We're gonna be drawing a ton of cards this turn. Even with the reset stamp to two, it's about as much as my opponent could have possibly hoped for. And that's why I benched out to make sure that I'm giving myself the best draw possible off of the reset stamp. Since we know that Picaram is one of those decks that plays reset stamp better than most decks in the format. So fortunately, we're working with three welders in deck now, as opposed to the uh, two we were rocking with earlier. So let's see what we can find. First, we're going to dance a tribute and see a few more cards. We've got Fire Crystal, but not much. Uh, I can Stellar Wish a couple of times though, so we're gonna do that. Stellar Wish, we've got the Welder, perfect. So now I'm going to get some energy back from the bin and Welder to our Blacephalon. And I just need four energies to be able to win the game. We got Fire Crystal to bring three energies back and that's it, easy, two knockouts. And we win Oracorio GX, just giving us the cards we need to Fireball Circus for 200 damage. And it's as easy as that. Baby Blacephalon, a very strong deck here. And props to Stefan Ivanhoff for just reinventing the wheel again and showing us a magnificent new way to play this deck. It is a great deck, highly recommend picking it up and giving it a try. The list looks wild at first glance, but it really is a very tight, well-considered list. And I think that it is uh, it is evident from playing with it that there was a lot of thought put into all of the card inclusions and the engine just works very smoothly. And I love the, uh, I love the concept of this GX and Pokemon V heavy Blacephalon from Unbroken Bonds deck. Now, the only thing after playing through some games, I think since this mirror match is a thing now, I think that Great Catcher could be a nice inclusion in the deck. There is no Great Catcher right now. We just got the Fion and Cramorant V to knock out things on the bench. So if you were gonna add something to the list, I think Great Catcher could be 
a phenomenal inclusion as well because in the mirror match, you're going to want to be able to target down your opponent's Oracorio GX. Having no way to KO that Oracorio GX in the mirror feels very bad. So that about does it for the Blacephalon video. Thank you all so much for watching. And also, thank you guys so much for helping us reach 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube. It's a huge milestone for me personally and for the channel and for us as a community. So thank you so much for helping us to hit 50,000 subs onward and upward. Looking for that silver button from YouTube, maybe one day at 100K. But thank you so much. It's been almost three years, three years-ish, uh, with the channel. So thank you guys for helping us hit that 50,000 subscriber goal. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel. I mean, there's 50,000 of us and I know that there's a, a huge portion of people who watch who don't sub, but if you could just drop us a sub, that would mean a lot. So thank you so much for all of the support. Make sure to check out the Twitch stream as well. Twitch.tv slash Tricky Gym. We just hit 9,000 followers on Twitch. So if you have any interest in watching live Pokemon trading card game content, I highly recommend it. I stream every single weekday and many days I stream during work hours. So if you're at work, we've got a huge community of people who just leave the stream up while they're at work. And we have a great community going on over there at Twitch. So I definitely recommend checking that out. And also thank you so much for supporting the store at Full Grip Games. Supporting Full Grip Games through the website there directly supports the content that I create here on Tricky Gym. So thank you so much for shopping with Full Grip Games and for shopping at fullgripcodes.com where we got instant PTCGO code delivery via email. Y'all have a great day and take it easy. Peace.